you see? Mm -mm. Do you have to press anything? I don't think so. Hit this. Oh, oh there you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so hello. Hopefully, there's nobody out here yet. I don't see anybody chiming in or anything like that. My, let me see something. Okay, before we start over here. Uh, Okay, I got you. so what I'm going to do is before I go ahead and start painting, I'm going to show you what I have as far as paints are concerned. Um, Alright, all right. this is my palette. This is a, a um, kind of palette that I use that the colors stay moist in because uh, the cover that I have has a little like I, I don't know silicone or something like that uh, something to keep it airtight and to keep the colors from drying up too much they're dry right now I, I've some of them are a little bit moist but um, some of them are still wet from use um, but this is my palette now on my palette there's black there's burnt umber burnt sienna I can't remember the reds exactly there's no cadmium reds. There's a cadmium orange. This might be a cad red, though. I don't remember this yellow, what the name of it is. Yellow ochre, Naples yellow. Uh, this is a kind of turquoise blue, ultramarine blue, and um, titanium white. I have no zinc white in here. I usually do. But um, that's, that's my palette. That's the palette I'm going to be using. Uh, in addition to this tray right here to mix the colors in okay so um, I hope the sound is good can you hear me good I hear you good okay all right so you can hear me good my wife Karen is here with me and um, if you guys have any questions she'll be uh, letting me know what they are as I continue to paint um, this is this is the photo reference that you see here is my son I took this picture of him a while back uh, and I've used it before and I chose it because I thought this would be a nice reference to work from the lighting is great the, the you know it's just really simple um, uh, lighting from above and so forth uh, so it's easier to model the forms um, also uh, I'm just to let you guys photo reference I'm going to be using so for all of you who want to paint along or draw along you can go right ahead we'll be doing it to this reference for the whole time uh, so that you'll be able to get a decent uh, um, image going so I hope you guys are following I hope you guys are drawing along enjoying the time that you have here to, to, to work from this um, as, as I go ahead and paint so I'm what I'm going to do also. Oh, well, should I comment? Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, well, Butch Curry says, hi, Gil. Okay, he said, hi. He said, your sound is good, and he oh. wants to know, what paper are you using? Good question. Thank you. Okay, I, I had meant, let me just take out um, some paper here. There's a number of favorite papers that I have. The one that I'm using here is this. Uh, it's it says Arches on it, but it's actually made by Canson. It's a art. It's called Artboard. It has an Arches watercolor paper, and this is um, hot pressed watercolor paper onto this very thick board. And what I did 
was that I uh, I just went ahead last night and put like this this quick wash of casein casein paint on it. I like the way when I paint on top of casein paint that the 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 um, the gouache just sits on it, you know, and, and it, it maintains a, a um, you know kind of bright vivid colors. Uh, also, another favorite paper of mine is the Stonehenge. Stonehenge craft paper. Now, I know it says craft paper, but it's actually uh, made from 100% cotton. It's a good, also very, very thick, very, very thick sheet of paper. You know, um, so that's another paper that I use. Um, some other... Some other paper here, which I keep. This is BFK Reeves. It's a printmaking paper, but I like also painting um, gouache on top of paper like this. I don't use um, watercolor paper too much. I don't like it for, uh, uh, for gouache. Uh, other than um, hot pressed, I don't like working on too, too rough a surface. Um, that's just my preference. But thanks, Butch. That this is this is the paper that I'm using. Uh, this uh, the Arches uh, art board, which is kind of like a, a thick illustration board uh, with a, a, a wash of casein that I put last night. Um, so that's it. Um, let me go ahead and start. Also, I'm not going to do a pencil drawing or preliminary pencil drawing because I think that's going to be hard for everyone to see if you're. If you're watching along or following along what I'm doing, uh, so that would probably be difficult to see. So I'm going to go ahead and just work on it. Just uh, go ahead and start with uh, some light washes. Hopefully my head won't get caught up in the um, in front of the camera. So I'm just wetting the paints. Now I chose the particular colors I, I do. These, these are, um, most of these are Turner gouache. And not acrylic gouache, but Turner designer gouache. Uh, some are Windsor and Newton. And some are Holbein. Now, I chose these because with these, they're, um, they cover well. They're, they're very, very opaque. And they're very moist. And I chose these particular colors and the, oops, got too much blue in that white. Uh, I chose these particular colors and um, the particular paints because of, because of that, because they cover well. And that's after years of using gouache. I, I, I've used gouache actually since high school. Okay, so I'm going to and this is kind of this is the way actually when I um, when I started learning how to really paint from the model when I was in high school high school of art and design that um, we did uh, we did oils back then so I'm kind of approaching this the same way just to do a simple block in Okay, did anybody ask anything else? Yes, well, there's Anshush Kumar. He says he lives in India. And oh, wow. He, and uh, he can't find casein paper there. Is there any alternative? Casein he paper? Oh, well, he says casein. He can't find casein here. Any alternative that I can use? Um... 
I, you know what? I think that, so the reason why I use casein is because I know, like, once it dries, it dries. Unlike, you know, um, unlike watercolor that, you know, you, you can reactivate it if you add water to it. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure what else I would use apart from casein. I, I wouldn't use acrylic, you know, unless it's like a, a very, very thin wash. But I, I, I haven't done that, so I can't tell you for sure, you know, what would, uh, if that would work. Um, it would, and it would have to be a thin wash. Um, but, um, yeah, uh, you could, you could also go ahead and, and, um, do, uh, um, just go ahead and, and use the, uh, gouache as well. That'll still work. Just, um, it would, again, it would have to be a thin wash because you don't want it to be thick. And for it to um, to reactivate, you know, when, once you add water in it, because here, some of this has already started drying, right? So this is not bad to paint over, but understand that, see the, the um, this, it's not bad because I'm not moving that much paint. So you don't have too much trouble reactivating as long as you keep the washes simple. Um, you don't want to build up too early. Because if you build up paint too early, what's going to happen is that it's going to be harder to make changes as you paint on top of it. Um, it'll, you know, you, it'll, when, when you continue to add color on heavy areas of paint, it'll reactivate the paint underneath and it'll mix with the paint underneath. So you don't want to go too heavy and you don't want to go too dark either. Well, Butch had uh, asked, do you usually use your full palette of colors or do you very often use small palettes? Uh, oh, most of the time I'm pulling this out and it has all the colors that I use. I, I, I generally buy the colors that I tell you um, that, that I've named earlier on. Um, but... I use this palette. I, I have a, a ton of other palettes that I might have used in the past. Um, but what happens is that I keep squeezing on paint in all these different palettes. And um, and it tends to be a waste, you know, because I, I, I waste paint that way. So uh, this is the palette that I use. And I'm safe with this one because what happens is, again, it's a stay, you know, it stays moist for a long time. So I'm able, it's easier to reactivate the paint. Okay. Okay. And Butch just commented that um, uh, based on what uh, Kumar uh -huh. was saying about the uh, casing, he was saying that uh, wash yeah. uh -huh, might be an option if he couldn't find the uh, casing. Casey, so, yes. Oh, Casey, so. Uh-huh. Okay. So, spending a lot of time just trying to find
Now the one I, I um try to go real slow and deliberate, especially in the beginning. Because the slower you go in the beginning, the less uh the less corrections you have to make as you go on. And I'm not too worried about color yet, obviously. I'm not making a big deal. I can change the color later on. What I, what I am concerned about right now is just the, um, just the, the drawing, the placement of the features, or I'm not really thinking features, I'm thinking shapes. Like, I, I tried to think of this big shadow area right here. And then um, making sure that all of these work within that. And then I tried to go back in and refine it. So that, so that everything works together and everything is in the right place. Before I start painting everything. Because then, once you start painting everything, it, it's really terrible to have to go back in and make major changes you know whether the, this eye is too too far up or too too far over you know once you've already applied the paint Part of this is really um, drawing with the brush. Did anybody ask anything yet? Maybe? No, not yet. Okay. brush was slightly bigger. When you do the, the casing, you have to be careful not to put too much paint, just enough to like with, with a lot of water to just tone the surface because if the paint goes on too heavy, then it becomes difficult to paint on top of. Right now, I like the way um, the paint sits on here. It just kind of absorbs the paint a bit.
by the way, I'm, I'm thinking of making this, this uh, live stream, just a, a, a regular thing. Because I'm thinking if I do this every Saturday, it would be great. Some, you know, uh, there's, there's a time that everybody know that I'll be on. Um, there'll be a reference to paint from. And we can all just go ahead and have like a Saturday paint session together, you know, or drawing, you know. Sometimes I, I drag the brush and it has this like nice dry brush texture. Did I? You know, it doesn't always have to be loads of paint. has said about your live stream it would be I guess do this live stream it would be a fun paint along okay great great uh -huh. and Butch had said that would be cool 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 want to kind of indicate where the glasses are going to go. I don't want to paint around them. Okay. I'm just going to... When I move my hand across, what I'm trying to do is kind of measure, make sure that the eye is in the right place and that they match, you know, and as far as the ear is concerned, the same thing. You know, I'm trying to make sure the distance between this eye, the nose, and this eye, and from here as the head turns and then goes into the ear, that this all, I'm giving the right amount of space for everything. So if you see me move back and forth and I'm not actually putting any paint down on on the thing it's I'm, I'm actually just measuring everything before i put any any uh paint down okay This is a kind of crooked on his face.
one of the things with, with gouache is when you first put it down, it goes down dark, but then it, it, it dries very quickly and it, it dries lighter than what you initially put it down as. Now what I'm doing is, um, this isn't the final color. I'm just trying to stain the paper, uh, the, the board, and then I'll work back into it. commented again. He said, he asked, have you seen Thomas Blackchia's gouache technique? I, I have not. I like Thomas Blackchia's work a, a lot. Um, but I haven't seen his gouache technique. People whose gouache technique I, I paid close attention to um, recently would be guys like uh, James Gurney and um, uh, what's the guy's name from Watts Atelier? Uh, the guy who runs Watts Atelier, I, uh, I like their gouache works. And, uh, you can see them on, uh, on YouTube as well. But other than that, I like looking at a lot of um, gouache paintings done long ago by a uh, bunch of, you know, different uh, illustrators who worked in the medium and, uh, and also fine artists. If you, you know, really, a lot, some of the things that we take as, as uh, watercolor paintings are actually gouache paintings. Um, there's uh, Durs, Durs work. A lot of that is gouache painting. A lot of what um, what uh, they call watercolor. You see it in in, uh, in art history textbooks, and they'll say, "Oh, this is a watercolor by Dur." Uh, the one of uh, the rabbit, and the one of uh, the great piece of turf. 
those are gouache paintings. What they did back then was, you know, they uh, they took opaque white and they added to their watercolors, and really that that to to make the um, colors more opaque, so they can add those details, you know, uh, like you know on the on the rabbit and on that uh, painting of the great piece of turf, they can add those details, and then effectively because you know it it becomes it becomes gouache. Okay, well, Butch comments further. He said, Black Shears treats it like an oil rub out where he puts down a lot of dark wash and then pulls the lights back out with Q-tips, paper towels, etc. Okay, so he must use a particular um, particular paper that also allows him to do that because I imagine it's taken a, a lot of beating you know to, to, to use that technique Still too blue. Okay, well, Kumar says, Sir, the perp, I think he means purple. Yeah. What about it? Uh, that's, that's it with his comment. Mm -hmm. Okay. says oh, okay okay here's here's a, a longer sentence sir the purple you are using how do you uh, I think he means divide which color goes where oh okay well oh decide decide right. yes okay. yeah okay well when I look in the shadows I see that the, for, for me, the way I see it, I, I see a bit of cool shadow. So what, you know, the, the purple allows me to go in between a warm and a cool. <clears throat> and from what I see on the screen, well, okay, what I see on this screen, it looks a little yellow on the screen, more so than it does uh, here on, on uh, my finished painting. But um, yeah, the, the, I use the purple because I see it a little bit cooler on there. So I use that purple so I don't get too warm in the shadows. And um, and later on, as I build the paint, I can I can I can work into that and just play around with the warm and the cools that I see in there.
it doesn't bother me that I lose the glasses because um, I just needed them as a, a kind of reference for right now as far as where everything is going to fit um, but I can always paint on top of this as I go on Anybody, anything else? No. Okay.
Okay. Well, we have another individual. Okay. okay. Um, I think it's from Linda Williams Dorridge. Okay. Uh, a, oh, okay. Um, a big fan of your art. This is great. Watching you is very helpful, even though I'm sketching and not painting. Okay. Either way, it's good. Great. Thank you. As the paint begins to build up and settle in, it's easier to work on top of it as it, right, as it is right now. The um, It takes a bit of time because uh, the board keeps absorbing the paint. It gets dark for a little while, then it gets lighter. And so it's, you know, you have to be familiar with the gouache and with the, um, with the board to kind of, um, anticipate what's it going to do. But as the paint builds up, more of the gouache sits on top of the board and it becomes easier to manipulate and to push around. As it is, I'm dragging the paint, you know, on, on the surface of the board more now than, than I am actually pushing paint around. Okay. Well, Alvaro Torres, okay. he, say, he says hello from Brazil. Oh, hello. Cool. Now it's kind of dark. I want to see what I can do to lighten some of these areas up.
the things is, as the paint starts building up and then you know I might worry that hey it, it may look a little light in you know the way I'm putting on this color one it'll it'll dry up and again it'll get soaked up into uh, the paint and absorbed into the paper but even then if it's too light I can always uh, just rub the you know just move the paint around with uh, water or with the uh, um, you know if there's enough paint on the board I can just move the you know I can just uh, move that paint around without the water but you see already the paint gets absorbed in there Well, I have a comment from, I think this is Pepper Wang 3. Uh -huh. and, and have you worked with acrylic wash? If so, what brand? I've worked with acrylic wash. I think I've worked with um, uh, Turner. Turner acrylic wash. Um, but not extensively. I, I kind of just played around with it a little bit so I, I can't tell you a whole lot about acrylic wash yet Now the paint is starting to um, sit on top of these other colors more, so it becomes easier to put stuff down because uh, it becomes easier to predict what the paint is going to do or how the board is going to absorb it.
Now in certain areas like you see here on the nose, there's enough paint there that I don't have to keep applying paint. I, I you know, uh, I can get to the shape of things by just taking some water on my brush and uh, just playing around with the paint, pushing the paint that's there, playing around with it and uh, blending it into the paint that's around, uh, that's around it. So anything there, Karen? Mm -mm, no. Okay. The painting has come along real well. Now you like it? Yes, I do. I 
paint so the paint builds up and I know what uh, and I can guess more now what how the paint is going to sit after I uh, put it down I can be a little bit bolder with uh, the way I put down the paint and the colors like if you notice I started adding more blue okay well you have a comment okay uh, from Nadju Nadjo Hi. Oh. would you make more videos for for perfect purchase on your Skillshare or other platforms perhaps even a street scene wow that's uh, okay well I have videos on Gumroad and I guess uh, once I'm done with uh, uh, with this live stream I can I can put I can uh, I can uh, put links to it below but as well I have a patreon page that if you would like to support this channel there and also you know there there are videos there there uh, I share a sketchbook you know there are videos that you can watch um, some more uh, tutorials uh, using gouache using uh, different mediums as well um, uh, digital because I, I also work in digital um, so and uh, yeah you can you can th there's a lot to get there there like uh, there's only two tiers there's a, a three dollar tier and there's a dollar tier um, for the three dollar tier you get you know a, a, a high res image as well as the sketchbook for the dollar tier you get the sketchbook uh, on occasion I put down videos there and then uh, for the three dollar tier I also put um, videos uh, which you can view on uh, you know some are in real time some are in uh, mostly real time okay you finished with the answer there yeah okay well a couple of wangs three want to know what medium do you find more difficult to work with okay what medium do i find more difficult to work with um out of the ones i use i use oils i haven't used oils in a while i use watercolor um, and I use gouache uh, apart from drawing where you know I use pencil um, if it was a drawing medium I find it more difficult to use charcoal I'm more comfortable with a pencil if it's a painting medium I, I don't know exactly um, I find them all challenging you know uh, if I can say one more challenging than the other I would guess it would be oil paints and um, you, you would think it wasn't because I was using oil paints since high school but um, I guess I find that more challenging if it was a uh, digital I, I don't find digital that challenging at all. Other than, you know, the challenge of um, doing a good drawing. I, I approach my digital the same way I do traditional art, you know. I don't get too technical. So, but um, as far as the, um, the traditional media, I would guess oil would probably be the right answer. As much as I love to work in oil. Um, but then maybe that's why. Because it, it presents a challenge 
uh, it's more attractive to me because I want to be able to uh, uh, want to be able to you know just meet that challenge head on and and, um, and not be conquered by the mediums Well, nature, okay, has a statement. The thing is, I enjoy your long videos that show your entire process. I bought one before, but would appreciate more. Ah, okay. And this is the, um, Major was the one who asked about the street scene? Oh, right. Okay. Right. Uh-huh. All right. So, would you consider doing more videos for uh, purchase? Always, always. It's just the amount of time it takes into um, doing those videos. Uh, but I, I would love to do more. something in for the background How are we doing for time? Okay, well, we're at 4.13 now. Hmm. And, uh, okay. We have about 45 more minutes.
going to say. So, uh, another comment uh, from Peppa again. Yes. Highlights. <laughs> yeah, highlights. Now, I'm kind of hitting some of these areas fast because I know I'm running out of time. You know. But I guess I shouldn't rush it too much because I can always finish later on and just share the finished product online. Now I can I can worry about the glasses more and placing them in the right place. What I want to do is kind of look at this shape instead of trying to do the whole thing, trying to connect the shapes right here and seeing that um, this part of the rim goes to just the very tippy top of the eyelid. And uh, here, it just cuts off right there. And then, so I can get as accurate a placement for the glasses as I can. Not perfect, but I can work with it and work into it.
trouble with this uh, glare from the wet paint messing with me. Storage? Yes. Yeah, she commented, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for uh, for uh, spending the time. hope uh, when you guys uh, you know you do this uh, the work that you do uh, for uh, from this reference um, I hope you guys are able to post it online you know I, I would love to see what you guys did you know you can do a hashtag uh, making art in the busy world and I, I can definitely look for that um, I'm on Facebook and I'm on um, uh, Instagram as well um, either one I would love to see what everybody came up with your uh, fans get to see you know how great this uh, portrait is coming out but if they were here and seeing it up close it's just magnificent really it really is that's and that's the praise you get from your wife well <laughs> you know what I, I wouldn't I'm not I'm not belittling it I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm I'm just just saying. saying. <laughs> And, and, then, uh, and then this also happens to be your son. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so, uh, See, as you build up the paint, it, it starts to cooperate more. You know, all your materials start to cooperate more as the, the paint gets built up. And you, could, um, you can do more things with it. Unfortunately, it takes such a long time to get to that point. That, um, you know, I don't know how far I can carry this before we're finished here. You know, it's all part of the materials that you use. Uh, it takes that long, partly because of uh, the you know the board that I'm using, uh, which I don't mind, because because uh, I like the end results. Okay, well, have a Wang's three. This is amazing. Thanks for the live stream. Thank you. Thank you for watching.
30 minutes. Oh, 30 minutes. That's a lot of time. shadow of the bridge of the glasses. Well, Nanzo, one and only a few people on YouTube that use gouache very well. Appreciate it. Can you talk? Why gouache? Why gouache? Okay, that's a good question. There's several reasons why gouache. One, when I was an art student at the High School of Art and Design in New York City, um, well, even before then, a long time ago, I was very into comic book art, um, and I bought a book by these artists. Um, it was uh, called The Studio, and um, it was Barry Windsor Smith, Bernie Wrightson, Jeff Jones, and uh, Michael William Coloda, and um, in that book... I noticed these tubes of paint in one of these, uh, um, one of the photographs, and, and I looked it up and it was gouache. So I, I was curious about it, and I liked the paintings that I saw in there, and I wanted to include gouache. So I went to an art supply store and I bought gouache. Didn't know how to use it, didn't have a clue. 
but I wanted to play around with it. So that was the first time I started using gouache. Then when I went to art and design, um, I learned watercolor and oil. And uh, as we worked from the model, there was one instructor there who uh, was painting in gouache. His name was Mr. Doctor. And uh, I thought it was interesting, uh, again, to, to come up with, the, you know, come up and see the medium that I, I started using a little while ago. So, and then as well, while I was in art and design, I started learning about uh, illustrators. Illustrators, uh, American illustrators who in the past used gouache. It was a quick drying medium, you know, um, and, uh, and it reproduced well. So they used it back then. Uh, after that, I, I did concentrate mostly on oil painting. That was um, that was my first love, actually, oil painting. But um, but what happened was that when I became a father, I had these children, and I didn't want them around the oil paints. And so initially I started to use more watercolor, but I missed that being able to build up the paint uh, like I did with oils. So I began to use uh, gouache because I could build it up and I can uh, play around with the paint more. And uh, so that's, and, and, and it kind of stuck with it. My children are older now. Um, they are much older they 19 and 21 but i still miss i still miss uh doing oil paints and now it's more because i don't have the space for it uh, but gouache and watercolor are a lot easier to uh to make space for So anyway, that's why gouache. I, I, I like the medium, um, and uh, I started exploring it when I was much younger. And uh, even if I were to have like uh, more space to do like um, oil paints and stuff like that, I would still continue to use gouache. Because I like the medium. Okay. Well, he responds again. He says, great answer. Do you find too much difference to it in a final painting? Do you find too much difference? to it in a final painting well it's very limiting when you do when you do gouache because you're limited to the size gouache really you you know it's not great for large paintings i mean i think the largest that i've done was a uh, like a 19 by 16 or something like that um and it was very difficult to, to do it that large um, I, you know, unlike oils where you, you, there's no limit, you know, to how large you want to make it. Okay, well, let me interrupt. He, he also says, compared to oil, I mean. Right, okay, that, it works. Okay. Um, like, compared to oils, you can make a much larger painting, you know, no big deal. You know, it, it, it lends itself to that. Um, but... You know, there, there, there's uh, it, your your artwork doesn't have to be big, but it's nice to not have limitations. You know, but uh, there's a different kind of finish that you can get with oils too. It's harder to get with uh, um, 
with gouache at least I find with gouache by itself like I've used gouache with other mediums I've combined it with casein which was a lot of fun well I'm painting on top of a casein wash right now and it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun and you can do a lot with it but when I actually mix it with the casein paints casein is very similar to gouache uh, but the thing about casing is that you need to um, you need to have like a, a stiff board like this because casing is even thinner than gouache and can crack very easily. Um, but it, it, it uh, unlike gouache, it dries um, it dries like oil paint. You know, uh, it dries to the point where you can varnish it. You can you know do other things with it. And it can begin to look like oil paint too after you varnish it. But um, so if I wanted to get more of a finished oil look, I could use I could use something like casein in addition to the um, to the gouache or with the gouache, and it, it, it works fine. Um, But again, it's very hard to do something as large as you could do it on oil paint with either medium.
wet paint happens. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to stop pretty much right now, just a few things. There's a, there's a quote from the painter John Singer Sargent that every artist needs to have a little man with a stick standing next to him. And uh, when it's time to leave the painting alone that he needs to hit the artist over the head with the stick that's uh that's from john singer sergeant i didn't make that up okay so uh so i guess i'm going to leave this alone i'm and and there are things which i can touch up on here it, it is far from perfect but um for this demonstration it'll do you know, as far as uh, doing this portrait on, on uh, painting on this board and so forth. And I'll probably touch it up later. Uh, usually I'll find something that, uh, that I, want, I would want to correct and, uh, um, and uh, touch it up, you know. So, but, uh, but first of all, thank you. Thank you all for joining. And uh, I will be back. I, I will do this again on Saturdays and I hope you'll join us then and uh, I hope uh, also get the word out I mean if you if uh, if you enjoyed this video please hit like and uh, um, so that way more people would know about it and, and I'd get more attention on my channel and I can you know it'd be easier to do this stuff more often uh, you know so uh, so yeah so I will be back next week uh, once um, this uh, this video is uploaded, I will also leave links to my Patreon, where uh, you know if you want to support the channel and if you want to get um, some more uh, art art related things, including videos, uh, my monthly sketchbook, and uh, um, uh, monthly uh, uh, high res image, you can join my uh, Patreon there. All right, so uh, thank you, and I will be back again uh, next week. Bye-bye. Let me see.